China has claimed it is in the process of testing an M-driven space, a key experiment that could prove whether the controversial thruster works or not. As reported by Antims UK, China reportedly has an M-driven on its Tiangong-2 satellite, which was visited by two Chinese astronauts, taken off in October this year. It's not entirely clear what the experiment is doing exactly, but it's sure to cause a stir in M-drift circles. China has apparently been testing out M-drift technology for the last five years. That's according to an article titled Electromagnetic Drive. Arabian Nights are a major breakthrough in the official newspaper of China's Ministry of Science and Technology, called Science and Technology Daily and the Chinese Academy of Space Technology CAST, reportedly held a press conference in Beijing last week to discuss their research. National research institutions in recent years have carried out a series of long-term, repeated tests on the MDRIF, Dr. Chen Yu, head of the Communication Satellite Division at CAST, said at the press conference, reported Intims UK. We have successfully developed several specifications of multiple prototype principles. Now, we don't know the veracity of all this. It's also not certain what China is testing, nor whether they are saying it works or not. They may simply be checking out the various claims that have been made so far. And, what's more, the MDRIV remains controversial. It's a purported reactionless engine dreamed up by British engineer Roger Shaw here in 2006 that works by bouncing electromagnetic waves inside a cone-shaped cavity. This is said to produce a tiny force, but over time this force could be used to power spacecraft on deep space missions, for example. It came back into the fore recently with a peer-reviewed paper published in the AIAA Journal of Propulsion and Power in November by NASA's EcoWorks Laboratory. However, that paper only sought to rule out several possible experimental errors, and there is still no proof that the technology actually does anything. The most likely outcome is that momentum really is conserved, and there's something funny going on here, Ethan Siegel wrote for Forbes last month. Criticize the end of it your peril, though, because there are plenty of fans who are adamant it works. Unfortunately, that hasn't been proven so far. So don't go jumping on any interstellar bandwagons just yet. HT. Ibtums UK. An intrepid underwater robot, under the command of the Australian Antarctic Division, Odd, has managed to sneak beneath Antarctica to have a nose around at the life down there. In stark contrast to the blindingly white surface world, the seafloor here is an explosion of color, filled with vibrant sponges, worms, algae and arachnid-esque starfish. When you think of the Antarctic coastal marine environment, the iconic species such as penguins, seals, and whales usually steal the show, odd biologist Glenn Johnstone said in a statement. This footage reveals a habitat that is productive, colorful, dynamic and full of a wide variety of biodiversity, including sponges, sea spiders, urchins, sea cucumbers and sea stars. The remotely operated vehicle, Rob, managed to get down beneath East Antarctica by slipping through a drilled hole at the surface of the sea ice. The marine ecosystem here bathes in waters that are often minus 1.5 degrees centigrade, 29.3 degrees Fahrenheit, all year round and they are often shielded from the sun by 1.5 meters, about 5 feet, of sea ice for 10 months in a row. This ice, apart from the occasional destructive iceberg, protects marine life from powerful storms, so it's a deep shame that it's beginning to fade away thanks to climate change. What lies beneath? Aus Antarctic via YouTube warming oceans aren't the only threat to life under the sea, however. The increased presence of carbon dioxide within the waters increases its acidity. In many parts of the hydrosphere, particularly for those that rely on carbonaceous shells to protect them, this is proving devastating. The oceans are actually the world's foremost carbon sink, and this is in fact one of the reasons why the odd expedition is taking place. Carbon dioxide is more soluble in cold water, and polar waters are acidifying at twice the rate of tropical or temperate regions," project leader Johnny Stark added. So we expect these ecosystems to be among the first impacted from ocean acidification. So take a good look at this rather glorious video of Antarctica's marine life, ladies and gentlemen. 
if we don't cut down our greenhouse gas emissions, the scene in a few decades' time is likely to be far more barren and lifeless.